everyone welcome back to my channel Wendy's kooky crochet tutorial in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to crochet the Jack Skellington inspired beanie that you see here if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my channel push the like button and ring the bell to get notified of all the new videos that I have coming out okay guys to make this beanie you're going to need a few things so and i don't want you to be intimidated but you are going to be using two strands of yarn so i want to get that out of the way first um just to let you know that we will be using two strands of yarn so what the one of the first things we need to do here is we need to look at this size chart and um, i have this on the community page you can print it out and look at it there um, so what I've got here is I think I want to make a beanie that is the adult small size so the hat circumference I'm going to use the hat circumference here so I'm going to make mine to 19 inches um, the crown diameter needs to be six inches but I'm not really going to use that measurement for this one and then the hat height is going to be seven inches on mine and um, I'm going to change it up a little bit so I'm going to make mine to really about five and a half inches and then I'm going to change it up some so like I said we will be working with two strands of yarn I'm using my eight millimeter crochet Hook. so I'm using a larger crochet hook with this so the project goes by nice and fast I'm also going to be using a measuring tape I'm going to be using my yarn needle of course some scissors something to cut it with and um, also I'm going to be using my um, my um, puff maker or my pom-pom maker and also you're going to need a smaller crochet hook here too to make um, Jack's face and the features for that so that crochet hook you're going to need to use is a five millimeter crochet hook so I'm pretending that these two um, strands of yarn are one and so I'm working it like they're one instead of two and what I did is I'm just making a slip knot onto my crochet hook the eight millimeter crochet hook and I'm chaining 15 which is about five and a half inches for me. So you're going to need to measure that if you're um, making, whatever size you're making, you're really going to need to measure to see how long it is. So I know at the end, I want the brim to fold up. So I'm going to need four inches on the brim and then I'm going to fold it up and it'll be two inches after I fold it. So that means I'm going to need about um, five and a half inches here or for me this is going to be um, 15 chains so once you get how many chains you need so once you measure the length and you're happy with the length then what you need to do is do one more chain because that's going to be your turning chain and we're going to work half double crochets down that chain so here I'm just counting how many that I how many chain stitches that I made so I'm gonna make a couple more to get to the length that I need to get to and if you're doing a smaller hat let's say you're doing the three to five year old hat and it says that you're going to need a five and a half inches or, or six and a half inches sorry hat height then you're gonna really make that to four and a half inches so you'll have at the end a couple of inches left over to a uh, make the bottom part and fold that up so now all i'm doing is i'm just half double crocheting all the way down this chain and again i'm working this like um like the two um, strings of yarn are one so i'm working it just like the two strings of yarn are one and i'm working it all the way down and I hate that black is really, really hard to see on a video. So I'm sorry that black is so hard to see on the videos, but it's just really hard to see. So I'm just working one half double crochet in each of those chain stitches. So the 15 and here you want to make certain that you actually are counting these um, because if it gets off, it's going to look kind of weird in the end so you really don't want your stitch count to get off here so if you start out with 15 like me then you're going to want 15 all the way down 
every single row there. And so here I'm measuring it and I have right at five and a half and I'm satisfied with that. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to work one half double crochet in each of the stitches that I just made. So each of the half double crochets that I just made. And if you don't know how to uh, make a half double crochet, I will link that video in the description below so um, you can figure out how to do that. And so here I'm just, again, going all the way down that row of half double crochets that I just made and I'm putting or making one half double crochet in each of the ones that I just made. And when I get to the end of this, I'm going to switch colors to my white color. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to make like I'm making the very last stitch. When I get to the very last stitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert my hook and then I'm gonna pull through the white. So here, I'm just gonna insert my hook in that very last stitch there and now I'm going to get my white and I'm going to pull that through to finish off that half double crochet. So instead of pulling the black through to finish it off, I'm going to pull the white through to finish it off. And then I'm going to chain one and now I'm going to work in the back loop down that chain. So you're not going to work through both of those loops, you're gonna work through the back loop. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video on doing that also. So I will link that below too so you can watch it because I have a really close up video of exactly what that looks like and how you can tell if you're working in the back loop or the front loop. So I will link that in the description here too. That way you can really figure out what you're doing um, before you kind of start this process. So here I'm working my 15 total half double crochets into the back loop. And then when I get all the way down, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and then I'm going to do half double crochets in both loops. So when I'm doing it in the back loop, it's when I change colors. So I'm just going to be going back and forth until I get to the inches that I need. So for mine, mine will be 19 inches is what I'm going to need. So I'm gonna just keep on doing the same thing back and forth until I get to the inches that I need. And here you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting my yarn out. I think one of them was a newer ball of yarn there. And so I chained one, I turned, and now I'm just working both of those stitches there. So I'm working in um, both loops on the half double crochets I just made. And I'm going to do that all the way down. And then when I change to black, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the white. So I'm going to make like I'm doing a half double crochet, but instead of pulling through the white on the very last one, I'm going to pull through the black. And as you can see here, I'm not cutting this yarn. I'm working it loosely and I'm not cutting it. So each time that you switch, you don't have to cut it because we are going to um, crochet right over those ends so you do not have to worry about cutting it and here I sped it up because I know it can be boring just watching someone going back and forth about a million times um, crocheting but if you need to uh, pause the video um, go back and watch the section that I did everything slower then please do and um, when I get a little bit more done I'm actually going to just cut the video and you guys let me know do you want to see the whole video not sped up because if you do then um, I can put a version out there where it's not sped up I just um, don't want you guys to be bored if you're if you're just sitting there watching me do rows of 15 half double crochets back and forth constantly so let me know in the comments if you um, want to see the video of me just going back and forth doing these um, half double crochets then I'll put that out there for you but again I'm just moving back and forth going back and forth until um, I get to the 
19 inches that I need for this size of hat. And there I went back and I counted some. And the reason I'm counting is um, I, I was afraid that I got off a little bit. So if I had gotten off, then I would have had to taken it out. I didn't, but if I had, I would have had to take it, it out and um, just redo that little section there. And again, I'm just going back and forth. And if you guys, if you like this video, um, if you like what you're seeing, then please consider subscribing to my channel and um, ring the bell to get updated on new videos that come out and um, like this video. And also, um, these will sell great at a craft show or, you know, at a fair. Um, so feel free to sell your finished product, but please um, don't make a vi another video or write the pattern out and sell it online or anything like that. Um, and if you do um, make these and sell them or anything like that, please um, refer people back to my channel. That would be fantastic of you. So I would really appreciate that. But again, these really do sell great at craft fairs too. Everybody loves this, these beanies and this series of beanies that I have here. So again, I'm just going back and forth until I get to the 19 inches. And if you're having any trouble telling the, what the back loop is or anything like that, again, I'll link that video so you can watch it because I have a video of it really slowed down so you can see exactly what the front loop is and the back loop. So, um, so that can be um, pretty simplified and obviously, um, when you're working this, since you're working with two strands of yarn, you're going to be going, you know, the back loop's going to have two strands of yarn in the back. So that's something that you're going to have, want to look out for with this. And just going back and forth still. Until I get to my 19 inches here. And it really, this really works up very, very fast, especially since you're using, I'm using such a large crochet hook and two strands of yarn. That makes it work up very fast. If you were wanting to do this for um, an infant or a baby or newborn or even a three to five year old, um, you might want to use a smaller crochet hook with... Um, with one strand of yarn. I would say, but once you get up to really about the, even, even the 17, 18 inches, then I would go ahead and use the two strands of yarn because, um, because it does really work up much, much faster. And it looks really great. And it's very warm with the two strands of yarn. So this is something that could easily be worn all winter long and keep somebody warm, which is really great. So here I'm almost to the end. So I'm almost at my 19 inches here. I'm just gonna work up a little bit more. And one thing that you wanna make sure to do is you wanna make sure you start, if you start with black, you end with white, or if you start with white, you end with black, because what we're gonna be doing is we're going to um, fold them over and we're going to sew them together. So now I cut my yarn and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this together, but I'm going to do this. Um, you put your back sides together. So the back side, what you're going to be using as the back side goes together and you're going to use your yarn needle and you're just going to go through the back loop there. So there's a back loop on those and you're just going to go through that back loop and sew those together. Okay. So that'll be the two that you can that you see right there so you're just going to go through those back loops right there and just sew them together and um i say back loops because when you fold it over so when you turn it inside out they will be the back loops right now it looks like it's the front loop because but this isn't the front or this isn't the side that's going to be facing out so at the end i'm just tying this off right like that and um, i'm going to fold this over and what I did not do is I did not cut the black yarn. If you did cut the black yarn, that's fine, but the white yarn is the only one that I cut there. So now I still have the black yarn attached. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to work half double crochets in each one of those ends. 
And um, so you should have for each one, so the black should have two half double crochets and the white should have two double crochets. So you know each stripe should have two half double crochets in it. So each stripe should have two and you're just going to work that all the way around where each stripe has two and you're working over those ends. So you see where I have the white setting on top of the black there and then the black setting on top of the white, the strands where I didn't cut it. So I'm just working over each one of those ends there and that will make it, that cleans it up and makes it um, look better since we didn't cut it and then there's nothing to weave in which is really great on this side because that would be a ton of weaving in so there's nothing to weave in here which is absolutely great and again I'm just doing one half double crochet in each of the stitches around now and I know that each black gets two and each white gets two so that that really helps you keep it even all the way around knowing that each one gets two stitches but let's say you used um, a smaller hook size and that you had to do more than two rows of black and more than two rows of white to make it match then if you had to do three rows or if you had to do four rows then you would just do however many um, that you had to do to make it match up and to make it look right. And then when I get to the end here, I'm just going to do a slip stitch in that first black that I made. So I'm just going to do a slip stitch right there. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to go around it. And I'm going to go around it until I have a total of at least seven inches here so as you can see I've got a white waist a little ways to go before I'm at seven inches so I've got yeah I've got about another inch or inch and a half to go so I just want to make sure that the black part is completely four inches long though on mine because I'm going to fold it up and I want two inches I want it the black part to be two inches after I fold it up and the reason I want that and I really would want that with if it was for a baby or however old the person was is because the circle that we make for Jack for his head is two inches wide so I need that black part to be two inches so it, that circle is going to fit on it and so now I'm just going to half double crochet around as many times as I need to get those that two or actually that four inches total here so I'm just half double crocheting around and then I'm slip stitching to the very first one we made and I'm going to just keep on going until I get to the four inches total that way again when I get to um, that way we can fold that brim up and that brim will be two inches then and so now I'm just going to weave that end in so I'm just going to take it, I'm going to weave it in, I'm going to, it's going to go in and out, around, and this bottom part, remember, this bottom part's going to fold up, so I'm going to cut it on this side, which looks like the right side, and so now it's just going to fold up right like that, and I need it, again, to be at least two inches, that way I know that um, the circle of Jack's face will fit on it. So I'm just going to measure that, make sure I do at least have um, seven inches at least there, and then of course two inches on the bottom. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these ends that I've already tied. So I've tied those ends off, and I'm going to take my black yarn, one, just one string of black yarn there, and I'm going to tie it onto one of the black areas. So I'm just going to make a knot in that and tie it to one of the black areas. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to sew it up. So you're going to go through pretty much each stitch there and you're just going to go all the way around like I'm doing there. And you don't have to go this way. You can go in and out. You can go all around it. And I like to pull it a little bit while I'm doing it so I can see that it's actually sewing right. So here I changed my method a little bit because 
I was thinking this was probably going to take forever just doing it like this. So here I'm just going, you know, in and out, weaving my needle through there, my yarn needle through there. So I'm just going in and out, weaving the yarn needle through there. And again, you can see I'm starting to pull it tight a little bit. Not all the way yet, but pull it tight a little bit. And you can see it starting to take shape and look like a beanie. And I'm just going to work that all the way around at the ends of each of those rows. Just keep working that all the way around. So you're seeing I'm really trying to work um, one in each row so it goes in and out. It's kind of like we were doing the half double crochets before where we worked one in each row. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to pull it really, really tight. So here I'm just pulling it tight and you can see it's not 100% closed yet. So to really close it, I'm going to go back through some of those, especially where it's bumped up. I'm just going to um, do another kind of row of what I did, but I'm going to go where it's bumped up right there and I'm going to go back through those and I'm just going to pull it really, really tight. And once I get it closed up, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put my needle through the middle and then I'm going to tie it off. So here I've got it really, really tight. So here I'm just going to work my needle through the middle and try to make it go through the black part, not the white part, so you don't see it especially from the outside of the hood. The inside of the hood probably doesn't matter so much, but the outside of the hood, you wanna make it so you can't see it. So here, I'm just tying a knot. And if you um, are uncomfortable with just tying a knot, if you're afraid it might come out, then what you could do after you tie the knot and, um, and cut your yarn there, you can um, put a little bit of fabric glue on it. So when I filmed this, I filmed this once already and the video messed up. So I'm filming this part over again. So what I did here to make Jack's face, this is making Jack's face, is I just made a magic ring and I'm doing eight half double crochets in the magic ring. So I'm just going around doing eight to half double crochets in that magic ring to make a circle. And when I get to the end of that, I'm going to um, slip stitch in the first half double crochet that I made. Now, um, I will link my video on how to do a magic circle, but if you're not comfortable with doing a magic circle, what you could do is you could just chain two and then make half double crochets in that first chain and then um, slip stitch in that first chain. So here I'm just um, chaining one and then I'm gonna do two half double crochets in each stitch that I just made. So I'm gonna do two half double crochets in each stitch I just made, which will mean I will have 16 half double crochets on this round when I'm done. So I will have a total of 16 stitches on this round when I'm done. And I'm just doing the two half double crochets all the way around. And guys, I figured out a different lighting technique, so I'm liking this lighting much, much better. Let me know what you think. I think it looks way more even and um, it's easier to see on camera. And here I've got my 16, so I'm just joining with that first one I made. And here I'm gonna measure it. I know it's not two inches yet, but I just wanted to show you guys measuring it. So I need a, to be a little bit bigger, so I need to make one more round. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to do two half double crochets in the first stitch, and then one half double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So two in one stitch and then one in the next and I'm just going to repeat that pattern all the way around for this. And that will make me have 24 half double crochets on this round total. So two in one stitch and then one in the next and just do that all the way around. And this, again, I'm using my five millimeter crochet hook here to do um, 
Jack's face and to make all the features for Jack too. So to make the eyes also, I'm using my um, five millimeter crochet hook to make the eyes also. Now I'm just gonna slip stitch to that first stitch made. And here I'm going to measure it one more time. So that is right at two inches. So that's exactly what I'm wanting right there is right at two inches. And um, I'm gonna compare it to the hat there. Okay, do I have enough room on the brim of my hat to put this? And yes, I absolutely do. So now I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm just gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna weave that to the back. I'm going to weave it in just a little bit and then after this what we're going to do is we're going to make the eyes and if you were um if you were attaching this one you might want to leave the white just a little bit longer so um, you can attach it with the white that's already connected there i wouldn't attach it with the black yarn because that's going to show through the white and you really don't want that. So now I'm just going to weave that in. So I'm just going to cut that end off. And then after this, I'm going to grab my black yarn and then I'm going to make the eyes. So what I'm doing with the eyes here is I'm still doing a magic ring. I'm going to chain one and then I'm just going to do four single crochets in that magic ring. So just four single crochets and I'm going to slip stitch into the first one and um, then I'm going to actually be, be pretty much done with the eye so I can slip stitch to that first one, pull it, I'm going to pull it tight, slip stitch to the first one there and then I'm going to cut my yarn. But I'm going to leave it long because I'm going to sew this up because it's puffy. So the eye I made is really it's puffy so it puffs out, puffs out a bit so I'm just going to slip stitch there and sometimes that black can be really really hard to see at least for me the black is very hard to see so sometimes I really have to count it to make sure I'm working in the right stitch so now I'm going to cut my yarn And then I'm going to pull this through and I'm going to get my um, crochet needle or yes or yarn needle and I'm going to um, sew those up so here's my yarn needle and what I'm doing here is I'm going to fold it in half to sew them up so I'm just folding this in half so I get it right like that I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to sew it up right like that so there's in half. So there's like kind of half of it there. I'm just going to go back and forth and sew that up pretty good. And of course you're going to make two of these, one for each eye. And now I'm going to attach it. So here I'm just finding an angle that I like so I'm starting in a stitch that is really the that first the end of that first round that I made so it's going to go from almost the middle so when I finish doing the eight half double crochets there so it's going to go from there and I'm going to make it sideways a bit and you can play with it you don't have to I'm going to go ahead and tie this off but um, you can look at it you could uh, do them both and see what both of them look like and then tie it off and just do it to where you're satisfied with it I just have it at um, a slight angle so I've got one attached there and then I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a magic circle and then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to do four single crochets in that magic circle. So exact same thing I did for the, for the eye the last time. It's what I'm doing this time. So I'm just pulling it tight. I'm going to slip stitch into that very first one made. 
and I'll probably have to count it again because I have such a hard time seeing the black. So I'm just going to slip stitch to that first one made there. And then I'm going to cut my yarn. And I'm just going to pull it through. And now I'm going to get my yarn needle again. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is sew this up. So I'm just going to fold it in half, just like I did before. And I'm going to go down. What I'm doing is I'm really working into those half double crochets that I made. Or, or I'm sorry, single crochets that I made. And I'm just going to sew those together. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It will be cute no matter what. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. And so when I'm satisfied with them being sewn together, I'm going to do the same exact thing I did before, which is just feed it through. And I'm going to get my crochet hook, pull the other end through. And then I'm going to look at the front. Do I like it? Does this look cute like this? And I do. I think it looks cute. So let's tie it off in the back and then cut the string or the yarn and then we're going to move on to the other features so what we're going to do to do the other features is we're going to get our black yarn and we're going to cut a long piece and we're going to just get our yarn needle and we're just going to kind of feed it through. So I'm going that last um, half double crochet that I made. I'm going to go around there. Right now I'm just tying the yarn on to my piece here. So I'm tying the yarn on to the circle. And for the nose, you see I have a long white. Do not cut that white off it. You want to leave that white one in the middle long right now. So do not cut that off right now. I'm cutting the end of the black there so it doesn't get in my way. Now I'm going to go through that very middle stitch. So the very middle of our magic circle, I'm going to go through that and I'm going to just make a line um, kind of going down and sideways so you can see um, kind of where I'm at here. and. Um, I'm going to do this really one stitch apart and that's it. Just one stitch apart. I'm going to go through the stitch that's right next to that one. I'm going to go back through that middle again. And you'll see how we get the separation in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this about probably maybe about the top of the nose. So I'm working in around, so I'm just gonna work around that, um, kind of the start of that last row that we made. So I'm just working around there, and I'm just gonna weave that in and out, and I'm gonna make lines for the mouth, just wherever I think it looks good at. So this is what you're gonna do, just wherever you think it looks good at, no two of these will be the same. So this is really just whatever you think, whatever you like, whatever looks good to you is what you're going to do. And you're just going to work it around and make little lines across however you think looks nice. And again, you probably want to make several here. And, you know, make sure you can still see separation for the nose and the eyes and the other features. So, um, so you can actually tell who this is supposed to be. And I'm just going to do this until I get almost even really with the other, with the other top of the nose, I would say. And if you didn't do it, let's say you wanted the mouth smaller, it would give him a little bit different expression, expression but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be cute. And these lines don't have to be straight up and down even. They can be, you know, a little sideways. Um, I think that's what gives it personality. And 
then after I finished here I'm going to um, secure the black so I'm going to tie the black off and then I'm going to pick up the white yarn that I still have attached so here I'm probably just going to make another another crossover and um, if you've done them all and you're like, I don't know, I think I need a little more, a little less, it's not hard. You can always take it out or add more. So just take a good look at it. You know, it's good to, you know, kind of step back and look at it as a whole. So, you know, there's one I should have added there. So I'm going to go ahead and add it now because it looks like it's a little blank right in that area. So there we are. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to work underneath one of the stitches on the back side, not the front side. And I'm just going to work a really nice knot in there and then tie this off. And then I'm going to um, pick up the white that I did not tie off earlier. And I'm going to put that on my yarn needle. So I'm just, so I'm just cutting that. I'm going to take the black off of my yarn needle and I'm going to attach the white. And then I'm going to go through that middle area. So I'm going to go up right there where the nose is. So I'm just a tiny bit above. I'm going to go right below to that stitch below and that's going to make the separation for the nose there. So that's how I make the separation for the nose is just going up above where it connects. And I don't know, what do you think? It might be cute to do two. I wasn't really thinking about me doing two, but it might be cute to do one on each side. So after that, I sewed it on and I, and I used, um, I used the black to sew it on, but um, you could use the white to sew it on. I used the black and I just worked through those very back stitches on, um, on the round part there on Jack's head. But if you wanted to use the white, then you could use the white to sew it on. And I still have that video um, attached. I just wanted to let you know that you can cut a long piece of white or you could use the black. So I had some black left over, so that's what I use. But you have to be really mindful to work in the very back of those stitches, that back loop or the back bump of those stitches. So you see here I'm sewing it on and um, yeah, and so I've got to be extremely, extremely careful to work through those back stitches so you don't see the um, black on the front of Jack here. And I'm just going all the way around. You see how I'm just working in the very back right there? So I'm just doing that all the way around and working in the back loop. And also, if you wanted to, if you're like, oh, I'm afraid it'll move when I'm doing this or, or something of that nature, then you could always get like a safety pin and pin it on where you want it so you make sure that it doesn't move around or anything like that while you're um, whip stitching this on here. And after I get all the way around, I'm just going to um, tie that off in, along the brim in the back. So I'm just going to kind of flip that brim over after I get all the way around and just tie it off in the very back. So here I'm just tying it off there. So same thing I've done before. And I'll probably work a few there. And again, if um, you're uncomfortable with tying it off, you could always weave it in or you could just tie it off and use some fabric glue just to make sure it's really secure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my... Um, white yarn and I'm going to cut a long piece so I can write Jack on top of that on my a beanie here. So I'm getting a really long piece of yarn to do this with. And I'm finding my yarn needle and I'm just going to thread it and I'm going to attach the white yarn um, on the back, on the brim there on the back. So I'm just kind of folding that over and I'm going to attach the white yarn at the kind of the it doesn't really matter you can touch it mid you can touch it bottom it depends on what area you want to tackle first so if you want to you know tackle the long part of the J the top of the J first then you might attach it 
a little closer to the top, but you don't want to attach it close enough to the top that if someone can actually see it. So that's going to be kind of a big deal there. So now I'm just working here. I'm going to make the J first, obviously. So I'm just going to kind of make that long part of the J. And this will be something that you um, will kind of just have to fill out um, because it can be it can be a little hard to you know see how big your letters need to be so if you um, wanted to measure it and say okay this is four inches so my letters can be at least four inches long something like that then you could definitely do that also or you know my letters need to be just a little bit less if it was four inches or if it's five inches you know so you could measure it and see how many inches you need each of your letter to be and kind of measure it off like that i don't i just kind of do it by eye because i've done it several times now so i just kind of eye it and do it from there and now i've got my j so i'm making my a and again i'm just I'm just eyeing it here, seeing what, you know, what I can do here. So I'm just eyeing this when I do the letters. I'm not, you know, measuring it. I'm not counting. I'm not doing anything of that nature. I'm just, um, just kind of freehanding it here. And the letters, they don't have to be perfect either. So if it's a little messed up or whatever, one, don't be afraid to take it out. It's okay. But two, if it's a little off, it's fine. It, it really, really does not have to be perfect at all. And my, my yarn got a little knotted up there on the back, so I'm just loosening that up a bit. And then I'm going to start the C. So here with the C, same thing, I'm doing kind of the long part first, that way I can, you know, see exactly where I'm at and where I need to be on this. And I kind of, I angled the ends up a little bit. And here I'm just going back to the top now. And then the... I'm going to go straight across on this one and then the next one I'm going to angle down just a little bit. So I'm just finishing up the C now and then um, I'm going to leave a little bit of space there and I'm going to go the longest side straight down with the K. K is probably the easiest one to make that or the that or the A. So here I'm just going to go again through the middle and up at an angle. And then I'm going to go through the bottom now and up at the opposite angle to make the K. And then after this I'm just going to turn it over and tie it off that looks cute I like how it looks so and it's not perfect and again it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm just going to tie the white off make it several knots again and then we're going to make our puff or our pom-pom I guess it is at the top I always call it a puff that we're going to make the pom-pom at our top and then we will be finished. And I got, um, I bought a pom-pom maker. I really didn't have a pom-pom maker before, but then I couldn't really use the colors that I wanted. So I really, I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to buy one and uh, then I can make sure I do all the colors that I actually want instead of just having to buy what's available. And so I'm using both strands now and the reason I'm using both strands is because it'll be less time so here the pom-pom maker I'm using the next to the biggest one I've got in this set and so you just open it up and you put the yarn around it and you just go round and around and around and around and I did it so many times that there wasn't like any space left in the middle which is what I wanted because I wanted my pom-pom to be really really full 
So I'm just going around and around and around, right like that. You close one side and then you go to the other side and you do the same exact thing. And you just go around and around and around and around a bunch of times. And again, I wanted this in the to be super full so I didn't really leave any room at all in the middle and I went around as about as many times as I thought it would uh you know thought it would hold here and I don't know if that's what that middle part's for but I figured uh, it's it's a good use for that now what you do is you go around and you cut and I really really need to get some better scissors I've I tried these this is what it came with to cut it but it really it doesn't work great so I needed to go get my other scissors and so I've got my other scissors now and they must be a little bit dull because they're not working great I found the best way to do this is if you do one layer at a time since you have many layers so you kind of do like the top kind of layer and then you do the bottom kind of layer um, that way it will cut more evenly so again I just had a hard time cutting through all of this but I may need sharper scissors too I think my scissors are like 40 years old and I'm real sure they haven't been sharpened so so I'm just going through those top layers so you go right down the middle there's that kind of slit in the middle so you just go right down the middle cutting that and I'm definitely definitely having a hard time cutting this here so this has been a bit of a struggle for me maybe I'll invest in some new scissors that's probably the best thing I could do once I figured out that um, you could go through the layers um, it was a little bit better but not a lot better so now you take a long piece of yarn and you put it around that middle part and you tie it you tie it as tight as you can so really just really 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 tight I tied a knot tied it several times like at least three times and now you pry open both ends again and then you pry open that middle part so you got to pry that middle part open and now you just go around and you cut off any um, stragglers for the yarn so you just go all the way around cut off any yarn that's uh sticking out any stragglers anything like that and it takes a little bit of cutting here so it'll take you a few minutes to do this and to get it kind of the shape that you're wanting it in but you just do that till uh till you're satisfied with your uh, pom-pom and how it looks and my my white background is a hot mess so I'm definitely gonna have to clean that up and again I'm just cutting off some of the excess and I'm fluffing it up with my fingers there so I'm trying to move some of that off my background just a little bit here and what I did is I'm just I'm pulling both sides of those yarn through the very middle is what I'm going to do here so I'm getting actually my yarn needle to do this with because the uh, the crochet hook was just not going to work with it so I am working it through that middle part with my yarn needle and I'm not going through the same exact spot I'm kind of going one on each side and then you see right here I can just tie that in the middle right like that and tie it off really really well but you don't want to make it so tight that it bunches up the beanie even more so you want to make it tight and tie it off really well but not so tight that it bunches up the beanie even more and now I'm just going to kind of fluff this fluff this out just a little bit and I'm liking the way it looks so there you have it guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, if you did please subscribe to my channel push the like button and um, ring the bell so you can see when new videos come out and happy hooking everyone